Hey, kids. Okay, if you're watching this, you're probably old enough to not like being called a kid. Let me start over. <clears throat> Hello, media scholars. No, no, that was weird. Okay, let's just get on with it. We've all heard it before. Technology is making us stupid. Kids don't know how to talk face-to-face -face anymore. If we don't get away from computers, they're going to start to take over. Watson. What is Las Vegas? Correct. In the classic, go outside and play. Adults are all kids these days with their MTV and their cell phones. Well, adults, listen up. We've listened to you talk down to new media for years, and we're sick of it. Everybody join in. No, no, we won't. Nobody? Tough crowd. But in all seriousness, I believe these adults preaching society degradation through media is all a bunch of bull loney. And as someone who has studied media for years, I'm here to refute that baloney. But it is important first for you all to meet some of my, uh, colleagues. So you can really understand where I'm coming from. So first there's this guy named Dwight Conkergood. His big idea is that everything we do is an act of performance. You know, just like Shakespeare's classic, All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. Except a lot less dramatic. Basically, he says that our actions are derived from four aspects of performance. Poetics, play, process, and power. The big one for my idea is power. I think that it is safe to say that we all want power in situations. Except no, we don't always have power. And why is that? Because our performance isn't always strong enough. We all know that some people are funnier, nicer, and all around better performers. And it seems like they always have power in situations. We all know them, the class clown types. And a lot of times it doesn't seem fair never being outgoing or social enough in public to gain power. And I'm sorry, but in this situation, the adults that I so rudely discredited before actually are right in one of their cliches. Life isn't always fair. But don't worry, you shy, perpetually powerless listeners out there. Not only am I here to discredit all of the anti-technology cliches, but I'm here to give you hope. All you have to do is stick with me. We've made it this far. Don't click that exit button now. Okay, I'm getting off topic. We were talking about performance, and I believe it is time to introduce another one of my so-called colleagues. Viewers, meet Richard Bauman, a scholar who studies what we're talking about, performance. Bauman states that performance is the interplay between communicative resources, individual competence, and the goals of the participants. Okay, what the heck does that mean? Well, let's work backwards. The goals of the participants. We already know that one. Power. That was easy. Next, individual competence. This refers to one's ability to achieve that power through performance. We do not all have equal performance skills in order to gain that power. Self-proclaimed genius Kanye West said it best with, no one man to have all that power. But unfortunately, some are more competent than others. Which leads to Bauman's next point of the interplay between communicative resources. And this is where the media finally comes into play. The communicative resources that Bauman speaks of are not just face-to-face -face speech. These can be any form of communication, from written letters to tweets or vines. So now that we're starting to get into the topic of media, let's do a quick recap of our friends Conquer Good and Bauman. Conquer Good said that everything we do is a performance, and one of the reasons that we use these performances is to gain power. Then Bauman took over and taught us that performances can be achieved based on many different factors. The type of power that they wish to achieve, their ability and skill to execute desired performance, and the medium at which they choose to perform. Okay, for real this time, we're going to talk about media. So we all understand by now that power through performance is a big deal. And we all understand that Bauman speaks of competence in mediums. So what does it mean if someone is more competent at performing through one medium than another? Let's say that one person is very good at performing over social media rather than a face-to-face -face conversation. What if those class clowns that we spoke of earlier are really good at gaining power in social interactions but not virtual ones? Who has a more valid performance? Are the adults right when they say that face-to-face -face interactions are better for us than online ones? Well, this is where I'll introduce my final colleagues, and we can finally get to proving those adults wrong. Meet Nancy Baim and Mae Chen Lin. Together, they did lots of studies comparing internet, face-to-face, -face, and telephone interactions. They found in their study that people are not sacrificing quality face-to-face -face interactions for low-quality virtual interactions, but instead supplementing them with really good internet interactions. They concluded that the internet is not a threat to the intellect of our society, yet just a cultural device used to achieve social goals. And if we remember what Bauman said about performance, power is the goal. So from learning from all of my colleagues, we can put together the fact that the internet is just another performance technique in order to gain power, no lesser than face-to-face -face interactions. But this all still seems a little confusing. So let's look at this in a real-life scenario. Meet my friend Tommy. Tommy is a class clown. No matter what situation he is in, he is always able to make jokes and make people laugh. 
Tommy's performance is the strongest when he is in a group face-to-face, but he doesn't have much of a social media presence. So we can say that Tommy is able to easily gain power in face-to-face interactions. Now meet Nick. Nick is pretty shy when you meet him, and even after you've known him for a while. You could say that he is not a very good face-to-face performer. However, Nick is an avid tweeter. When asked about it, Nick says that not a single tweet of his goes unfavorited and that most get retweeted by multiple followers. It is safe to say that Nick has a very good social media performance and gains himself a lot of power. So what would you say? Is the power that Tommy has obtained any higher quality than Nick's? I hope that after watching this video you understand that one person does not have a better performance or more power than the other, but instead they have catered their performances to their competencies. Thanks, Bauman. Now, viewers, it's your chance. Next adult that serves you some of that baloney about how the internet is worsening our society, stand up for yourself. Tell them that not everyone is the same, and that while face-to-face interactions may help them achieve their goals, your goals may be achieved more easily with a different communicative resource. And if they don't believe you, don't worry. Just remember, Conquer Good, Bauman, Bame, Lynn, Tommy, Nick, and I can back you up. Now, go tweet about how much you've learned. Go! Uh First century, doing something mean to it. Do it better than anybody you ever seen. Do it. Screams from the haters. Got a